do your notes suck? Do you write way too little or way too much? Does it take a whole team of decryption specialists to figure out what the heck you wrote? Fear not. I want you to be proud of your notes. I want you to get to the test and think, oh, I remember this because I wrote it in my notes and I studied it. Come, come. I'll show you. I got you. Good morning, evening, afternoon, middle of the night, wherever you are to everyone. A special shout out to the people who are watching this in the middle of the night. You're my people. Sorry for the inconsistency in uploading. My living situation and life have been unstable, to say the least. <laughs> this is also why I am coming to you almost live from the out of doors. If you hear birds, sorry. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. This is, this is what I got, okay? I always get a lot of compliments on my notes. I got a couple of comments on my how to be productive video on my handwriting and my note taking and it's something that I've actually kind of learned to like doing. Like I appreciate my notes and I love making them look good and I love it when they work. I'm going to show you several different methods that are scientifically proven to help you study better and help you remember more. I'm going to show you some tips and tricks when and where I use these methods because one method doesn't always work for everything. And at the very end, I'm going to show you exactly how I take my notes because I take my notes a little differently and it's a combination of multiple different styles. Okay, I think that's it. Okay, let's go. Alrighty, first up we have the Cornell method. Also, I apologize, I literally don't practice or script or rehearse anything that I'm saying, so this is literally off the top of my head. The Cornell method is essentially just how to organize your notes on your piece of paper. At the very top, you would write the title. On the left, you would write the keywords. On the right, in the middle, you would write the actual notes where you would put like lists, diagrams, raw notes of the lecture, and at the very bottom, you would put the summary. The whole point of your notes looking like a Tetris game is to organize it because a lot of times you write notes and then you go back to them and you have no idea what the heck you're talking about. This way, you look at the top, you know what it is. You can look at the left, you know the vocabulary words you need to know. You know what questions might be on the test so you can start studying. And when you look at the bottom, you get a summary so if you don't have time to go through all of your notes, you can just flip through the bottom of the pages. You know if there's something that you need to study more. At number two, we have mind mapping, which sounds really, really cool um, and is really, really simple to do. Essentially, in mind mapping, what you do is you make a map of what's going on in your mind. No way. Okay, all jokes aside, um, what you do is you start with a central topic, you try and start at the center of your page, and then you just branch off to do subtopics and related ideas. All right, disclaimer, this does not work for just anything. I personally used this method when I was studying geography because it was super easy to just write the name of a country and then the states and then the cities that you need to remember. And it works well for certain subjects like medical terminology if you're in nursing school um, or like flow charts depending on what you're studying. So make sure you use it at the right times and it is a game changer. All right, and next up we have the outlining method. This is probably the most common method of taking notes, but if you write, it makes a difference. If you can imagine how you would write an outline for an essay, you essentially do that, but then write the full on notes. So what I like to do is I like to make each PowerPoint or main idea one paragraph. And then I write the main points that the teacher makes under subtopic and then anything technically titled related idea would be something more specific. The key to making this work is to actually <laughs> have a key in which you stay consistent with your bullet points and your little doodles and your little drawings 
or you're gonna get really mixed up and you're gonna forget what the heck you're talking about. The moment you've all been waiting for, probably not, but I mean, aren't you wondering how the heck I write my notes? Because I don't do any of these things. I'm a little more chaotic than that, and here you go. This is what I do. It's literal chaos. We hit the ground running. Nobody knows what's going on. It's the wild west of academia. We're dodging order like bullets. I am the joker of my own city. I... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's really late. I'm getting carried away. Okay, so what I actually do is I just start writing whatever the professor's talking about, whatever's on the PowerPoint, anything and everything that seems relevant with no real order. I don't bother with capital letters or punctuation because I'm trying to go as fast as possible. I only use commas to separate thoughts and sometimes dashes to separate like subtopics. And the most important thing is that I rewrite my notes. I know this is time consuming, but it's really, really important. Ideally, you would rewrite your notes right after class. Sometimes that's just not realistic. So sometimes I rewrite my notes as a review. Most importantly, make it really pretty when you rewrite it because you will be using that to review and you'll be using that for the test. It's super important. Also, I kind of copy some Cornell method stuff when I write something really important, I'll write it on the bottom or on the side just so it's easy for me to see it when I first glance at the page. And that's it kids. I really hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it helps. I hope you can take better notes from now on because it is really important and it can make or break quite literally your college or high school career. So goodbye if you made it this far. I love you. I hope your life is great, and I hope all of your dreams come true. <laughs> also, a special shout out to Harsha for being an angel and reaching out to me on Instagram. I know I don't have that many followers, but for what it's worth, you're great.